What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here for AKW Q&A. Now today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the series and just giving you guys a general update on the whole um, AKW Q&A series. So if you are interested in hearing all that, then by all means stay and continue watching the video. But if you aren't and you just want to hear the questions and you just want to experience the video, then by all means skip ahead a couple of minutes. Probably going to take about four or five minutes to, to do this update or I'll probably just leave a timestamp in the description if I can remember. Um, but yeah, so... Essentially, this series has been going through some changes that you guys mostly wouldn't have noticed, but generally, I'm getting most of my questions from my Discord server. Um, and it's a very, very good way of doing it because I can give you guys feedback, pretty instant feedback. Uh, a lot of YouTubers notice this and will, will already have uh, experienced this phenomenon, but generally, as a YouTuber, you get one chance to make an impression on your audience per sort of video you upload. Well, that's just the nature of your uploading a video. Um, you record your audio, you edit it all down, or whatever, and you, you click upload, and you upload the video. That's it. You don't really get another shot to make an impression on your audience without uploading another video. And you know, you don't really want to upload a video to, to just make a small commentary or make a small sort of statement. Um, so you get one shot to get all your points across and to make sure you got all your bases covered and then that's it. And then you got until your next video to, to think about how to respond or how to make another statement, I guess. Um, and so how that relates to AKW Q&A videos is I will make the Q&A video, I'll answer all your questions, and then I'll ask you guys to leave any more questions in the comment section. And so you guys will watch the video, you'll perhaps leave a question, most of you don't, but if you if you do want to leave a question, then you, you go to the comments and you ask the question and then you leave. And if I think the question's bad or if I've already answered it before, I can't really give you guys feedback because all you guys do, and this isn't a fault of you guys, obviously, this is just how YouTube works. You'll click on the video, you watch it, you comment, and you leave, and that's it. You never come back, sort of thing. Now, some people do. I'm not saying you guys all do this, but some people do come back, and some people do respond or whatever, but generally, you've got one impression, and that's it. Whereas with my Discord server, um, it's very, very easy for me to, to give you guys an idea of whether your question's going to make it into a video or not. Um, I've noticed that most of the time you guys are, are just attempting to sort of be in a video. Your whole sort of, the whole sort of inspiration behind leaving a comment is to try and be in the video. And, uh, and I, I, I totally understand that, you know, it's cool, it's cool to be in a video. So, um, generally, generally what I see is I see players really, or people really, really trying to be in a video and get their question answered in the video. And they, they, they often are really grateful for their question being answered in the video. So, um, what happens on my Discord server is I have a channel dedicated for questions for the Q&A videos. And if you are wanting to leave a question, then you go to this channel, you ask the question, and um, then what I'll do is I'll read the question, and if it's if I plan on answering the video, uh, answering it in the video, then I will leave it in there. If I don't plan on answering the question, and for whatever reason, you know, I might have already answered the question, it might be garbage, it might be a shit post, it, it might just be a boring question, um, then I'll delete it. And so if your question gets deleted, and you can go back and check this, then you know, hey, he's not going to answer my question, maybe I'll leave another one. So you get sort of gratification for whether you're actually going to get your question in a video or not. There is a list of people in the channel currently that they all know that their question is going to be in a video. And so they get the idea and they can um, sort of understand that their question is going to be answered, which is great. Um, generally, also on my YouTube comments, I'm not really getting that many questions at all either. It's it's kind of strange, but on my Discord server, I guess I have a more direct connection to you guys, and I can talk to you guys more easily, and I can ask you guys, you know, hey, go and leave some questions in the in the questions for Q and A channel, and it's very easy for you guys to respond to that and say, yeah, sure, I'll go answer the questions or whatever. And so it's just a more sort of direct feedback sort of relationship I have with you guys, and it just it's just more positive, and it's more of a um, it's just more easy just for everyone, for all parties involved. Um, Hopefully I explain that in a way you guys can understand. Uh, one criticism I always get when I bring up my Discord server, or my guild for that matter, is that uh, it's a toxic place. And I am trying to rectify this issue. Now there's a whole other problem entirely, and so I won't go in into too much detail here, but generally my Discord server, it's a toxic place, and I am trying to fix this. I have some moderators that I've recently promoted, and they are hopefully going to be making the Discord server a more positive place. Um, I'm going to be taking more severe action against people who make the environment more toxic, but you must understand that I'm not online 24-7, I'm not reading the chat 24-7, and sometimes there's a lot of messages being sent in the chat, and so I can't go through and read every single one and make sure every single one is a positive and nice comment, you know, I, I do try and have a life, so um, if you do see someone being toxic and you are offended by something, or if you do see something you don't like, then please, 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 please send me a screenshot of said message and of said person in 
um, in the wrong here and I will try and rectify the situation. Um, you know, I can't do anything about it if all you do is, is complain without any evidence. You know, you can't just come to the comment section of this video and say, Oh, your Discord server is real toxic. I don't like being there. And then that's it. You know, how am I supposed to fix that if you don't tell me specifically what the problem is? Because I'm just sitting there like, well, I haven't seen anything. I, I don't know what you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, without any further ado, though, let's get into this week's comments. Questions, not comments. They're from my Discord server, not from the comment section. Alright, so our first question this week is coming from Rezd, and they asked, What are your thoughts on PvP? Um, so, this is, I've kind of alluded to this before in the past, but I don't actually think I've sort of specifically stated my thoughts on this. Um, PvP, in my opinion, is garbage. It's really, really bad um, for a multitude of reasons. I won't get into all of that in this video. Obviously, it's already gone on for a while now. Um, but generally, it's it's the, to do with the game mechanics and generally just the engine more than anything. Um, AQW has a weird system where they tie the, 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 I guess the animation and feedback you get as a player, um, to your ping. So to your response rate to the server, which means that as of someone in New Zealand, I have a delay on everything. So when I click a button in game, I only get the reaction of it and I only get to see the result of what I've done, like a certain m amount of milliseconds afterwards. I think it's 200 ping is what I get generally for... Um, AKW, so that's pretty bad. Generally with games like Call of Duty or CSGO or just competitive shooters in general, you get uh, instant feedback. Now whether that's, it's not relayed instantly to the other players, but as a player you should get instant feedback. It should be your client side, which means that when you click your mouse button, it doesn't take 200 milliseconds for the bullet to come out. It takes, uh, there's, there's obviously, there's hopefully zero delay for the bullet to come out of the gun. So you can instantly change what you're doing in relative uh, relative to what you you saw from your previous action, if that makes sense. AKW doesn't do this, they tie it all to your ping. So everything's tied to your ping. So as someone from New Zealand who has awful ping, um, I don't get to see what's happening until it's already too late often. So people can stun me or whatever, and I don't actually get to see any of that until they've already begun their next action. So it's, I kind of explain that in a terrible way, but it, it's, I'm, I'm telling, I'm, I'm speaking the facts here, boys. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, that was, that's my main problem, but there's obviously a whole bunch of other problems. You know, the map design is terrible, um, the class design in the game is awful. It's just a bunch of things that I hate about PvP, but yeah, PvP sucks. I hate it. Our next question is coming from Denzel, and they asked, What seasonal event do you look forward to the most? Um, so mine's Nogas Birthday. Um, I'm not really too into any, like, actually playing seasonal events, to be honest with you. Um, if you've noticed, I haven't really, like, done videos where I've been playing events in the past. I sort of just look for the rares and the classes and stuff. Um, Nogas Birthday is one for me because I just really love Nogath items in general. I think they stand out from the rest. So just as a player, I guess that's the thing that gets me the most excited and it's one I look forward to the most. Um, although events that include classes, I guess. So Dage's Birthday is also really cool as well because there's always a class. Um, but yeah, I just I just like classes and Nogath is sort of my, I guess, area with AQW. So that's what I look forward to. Sir Shadow asks, your favorite and least favorite AE staff member. So... I actually thought I was going to give this a bit more consideration beforehand, but I guess not now. Um, <sighs> favorites AE staff member? I mean, there are a lot of people that I, I really um, respect and, and I uh, think uh, have done great stuff in the past. Um, Pisces, Sync, Zereldo, those people come to mind. They're class designers, obviously. Um, I'm sorry if I forget if I'm forgetting anyone. Um, Arklin does some cool stuff as well. Um, but my least favorite AE staff member? I mean... <sighs> I don't know, I, I, I don't really think anyone sort of crossed me in the past and made something uh, bad or it has specifically been responsible for something that I really hated. Um, I guess whoever decided to use Flash uh, as their engine is my least favorite staff member, which was probably Artix, so... A, no, I don't know, I don't know. I don't really have a least favorite, to be honest. I know that sounds like a really I'm really dodging the question, but I just genuinely, just genuinely don't have a least favorite staff member. I just... I don't know, I don't really feel that strongly about staff members, to be honest. They just seem like cool dudes. Alright, this is where it starts getting a bit controversial, boys. Um, Alex is asking, are you a normal pizza person or one of those pineapple pizza persons? So, I'm, uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm open to new ideas, open to new experiences, and I don't really, uh, I, pff, pineapple on pizza's fine, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Hawaiian pizza, it's, I'll eat it, whatever, I, I don't, I love it, don't hate it, it's, it's fine, it's just a normal ingredient, in the same way that, uh, bacon is an ingredient, now bacon's like one of the fundamentals, what's another topping, like, uh, pepper, 
or no, I guess in New Zealand we call it capsicum, but I, I know I know for a fact I don't think other countries call it that. Either way, I mean it's just another topping. I don't know. Cran22 asks, what do you think about AQ3D in its current state, and also what do you think it'll be like in the future? Um, so obviously the future questions are very easy to ask for me. I think it's just going to get better and better. Um, Artix Entertainment is putting pretty much all their resources into making AQ3D better, and I really, 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 really appreciate that. AQ3D hopefully one day will be a great game. As it stands now, it's obviously in one of its it's it's in an early stage of development, um, and they kind of were forced into that because of how small of a company um, AE is. They can't really push out like a, a full you know AAA release title. Um, in the same way that other companies can do, they have to kind of push out half-finished games to actually even make a game in the first place. I disagree, like fundamentally, with early access as a as a way of distributing uh, games. But I mean, AQ3D 3D isn't a paid game, so I guess it's fine. But I mean, I don't know. I, I just it hopefully will be good one day, and I think it. I think I really do think it will be. Um, but what it's like currently, um, I mean, I don't play it on PC. I think it's. To me, it's it's a it's a pretty terrible game in its current state. It's worse than AQW, which I didn't actually think was possible for a game to be. But you know, uh, but on mobile, I have much more, a much better tolerance for terrible games because I'm obviously in, in very boring situations generally when I'm playing games on my phone. So I've booted up AQ3D a couple of times and been pleasantly surprised with how uh, bored I wasn't. I, I wouldn't say entertained I was because I wasn't really entertained by it, but I guess how not bored I was. I don't know. It's just I guess I just have better tolerance for for shit mobile games but yeah uh, I don't know it's just it's bad in its current state but it's, it seems to be getting better and better with every update Sam William asks what do you think about the recent events coming out story storyline wise are they good or bad um I don't really play the storyline that much I haven't really been interested in anything in the story since the the 13 Lords of Chaos what was that one a while ago um it was the one with the tachyon blades ah uh, that whole storyline uh Throne of Darkness, was that the whole thing? Yeah, Throne of Darkness. That was the last sort of semi-interesting thing. It kind of trailed off and I lost interest in it, but the first couple of storylines were okay with it, I guess, but I, I sort of lost interest like I did with everything in AQW. Um, I don't know if it's if it's me or if it's the story, but I haven't really been interested in anything story-wise since the 13 Lords of Chaos, so I can't really answer that question fully, but yeah, it's just okay, I guess. I don't know. Some people have been saying it's all right, so I guess I'll, I'll, I guess I'll say it's all right. Next question is coming from Hi, I'm MJ, and they asked, should we have rankings at PvP or nah? Um, so what I presume they mean by this is, should there be like a competitive mode system with PvP? And I already talked about how I think PvP is terrible, so if they improve PvP and make it actually good and objective rather than just whoever has best ping wins, um, because that's how it works in some games already, but not to the extent of AQ, oh Jesus Christ, I, I could, honestly I could rant for hours about how terrible PvP is, and I probably will at some point, but... Um, at, uh, competitive mode PvP, I think any competitive mode for any game is good for the community. Um, obviously it inspires a lot of toxicity, and so you'll get a very toxic part of the community that hates PvP and hates all that sort of thing, and just, you know, ELO hell and all that bullshit will probably be introduced to the community, which should be interesting to see in AQW, because it'll oh, you're laughing at, at people complaining about it, and be like, <laughs> I've dealt with this in other games before, and it's just a, yeah, whatever, but yeah. I mean, com competitive mode PvP, I'm open to it, I guess, if they improve PvP, and it'll be cool to see, um, like, an actual, like, ranking system, that'll be cool, but I don't know. PvP needs to be improved first. Black Ice asks, did you think it was worth buying the 10,000 AC pet for Talk Like a Pirate Day this year? Assuming you did, obviously. So yeah, I, I bought the 10,000 AC pet, um, they promised a bank pet, and I'm a bank pet collector, so yeah, I, of course I've got to buy it, um, but... In saying that, I uh, don't regret it actually, it was pretty pretty damn good. Um, obviously the bank pit is, an, is a nice bonus, um, I obviously wouldn't be able to skip out on it because I'm a bank pit collector, so I, I, I got it for the bank pit, but I mean the armors are nice, they uh, they look good, they've recolored really well, the purple one, the black, the shadow, the red, the orange, the brown, the gold, those ones in particular stood out to me. Um, I did make a whole bunch of tweets about this, and I tweeted out my opinion on all of them individually, but yeah, I, I think I might actually do a review on all of the Talk Like a Pirate Day stuff just in general for this year, but yeah, um, I like them, I think they're, they're good, and if you are like a sort of person who switches around their armors and stuff a lot, and but you enjoy like sticking with a certain theme, then yeah, it's, it's, it's cool, and you get a lot of stuff for the 10,000 ACs. Obviously, they're all just recolors, but I mean, they were recolored well, I think is a, a point to bring up, and 
I don't think they could have achieved the same results that they did get with just a single color custom set of items. I think that they uh, recolored them well and they did a good job, but um, 10,000 ACs is still a lot for a pet, so it's not for everyone, obviously. This next question is coming from Ninja with a rocket launcher, and they asked, do you ever play AKW for fun, or is it literally just for video material? So yeah, it's literally just for video material. I'm playing AKW either to record background gameplay, or I'm recording it, I'm playing uh, AKW to manage my guild, or I'm playing AKW to farm an item for my videos, or like, you know, farming for level 85 or whatever for my videos. Um, so for example, Enchanted Nogath Nation House, that was generally like for my videos or for my guild or whatever, I did make a tutorial on that. Um, so that was the reason for farming that. Um, the reason for farming Void High Lord, same thing, made several videos on Void High Lord, and I'm a class collector and all that, so I, I try and do all that for my videos. Um, and uh, yeah, like just recording background gameplay, I, I'll go to solo King Cole or whatever, or solo certain things, or just farm certain items just for background gameplay. So uh, I'm never really playing AKW for fun. Like, I don't actually think I can remember the last time I played AKW and thought, you know, I'm having a great time, you know, I'm, I'm having a... Having a good time playing this game. It's really, I've sort of, um, I'm not, I wouldn't say evolved because I guess it's kind of a, a, a de evolution, I guess. A, uh, it's not really a good thing that I don't have fun playing EKW, but yeah, I guess I'm just growing out of it, I, I suppose. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, so yeah, I don't have fun playing EKW. I just do it for videos. Milu asks, What items do you consider I must have to be able to, cons to say you're in the Nogath Nation? So, um, I guess you're, you're, you're sort of asking, um, you know, like, if you, what items in particular do you need to consider yourself a member of the Nogath Nation? So, um, it's, it's not really a big thing for me to, like, say I'm in the Nogath Nation. I guess I've, I've farmed the, some of the biggest ones, so I guess I'm safe, safely in the Nogath Nation. But I guess big items like the Enchanted Nogath Nation House or Void High Lord or just stuff like that, just that's above and beyond the easier stuff like the Juggernaut items is what I'd probably consider it to be. Um, it's not really a big deal for me though, like I guess if you just, you have a lot of Nogath items, just even if they're easy to get, like you've spent some ACs or I don't know, you've you've uh, put some time or effort into it and you can, you've got like maybe Archfiend class or Void High Lord, just a couple of high tier sort of items or you like to have them equipped or just some of the orbs, I don't know. Just, just some high tier items, I suppose, some some uh, end game type items to do with Nogath, and yeah, you're in, I guess. My final question this week in this very, very long episode of AKW q &A is coming from Alex once again, and they asked, what's the best AKW event you personally experienced? So there's not really many that come to mind, to be honest, that really stick out above the rest. Um, just generally, Friday the 13th events to me have sort of been pretty cool in the past and have sort of had some cool stigma surrounding them. Um, not really the more recent ones, more just ones in the past with like Voltaire and, um, who's that guy at that camp? It's like a campfire dude and he becomes like this weird monster. Um, George Lowe? George Lau? L-O-W-E, I think is his name. Um, and yeah, no, he was a really cool guy, uh, cool, cool character, I guess. And, uh, I really, really thought he was this awesome. And, um, the event though, that I'm, in particular, that I'm referring to, I don't even think George, George Lowe was in this event, but, um, it was the Friday the 13th, August in August of um, 2010. That was the actual like day that I created my account. Friday the 13th, August 2010. And uh, that was uh, that was a cool event. Mainly because it was when I created my account, but also I got a pet out of it. Um, and non-member pets at the time were quite rare. Um, and the pet in question I'm talking about that I'll have equipped on my character page probably if you go there now, is called Voltaire's Baby Black Unicorn Pet. It's just a cool looking pet wasn't too expensive, and uh, I don't really know of many people that have it. And uh, it's just a just a cool pet. It's the only reason why I like that event. Just a cool pet, and uh, it's when I created my account. So yeah. Either way though, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Like I said in my announcement and stuff at the beginning of the video, um, most of the questions are coming from from the uh, Discord server, but obviously I'm still getting questions from Twitter and the comment section. I'm not just going to be cutting those out entirely. So by all means, ask me any way you like. A Q and A question, and I'll uh, if it's good enough, I'll record it down for the next video. But yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.